What's up, Bam? Thank you so much for sitting down with me uh, and like welcoming me to the castle. This is such a cool experience, like seeing you throughout my childhood, and like I I'm sure a lot of the people understand this. We know you like from the skating realm and Jackass and Viva La Bam, and yeah. just your art of creating like a different kind of video style to captivate and keep people and keep people watching. That uh, so many people out on YouTube have tried to replicate over the years and yeah. follow exactly in your footsteps. But I've always found it interesting, nobody's ever asked you about your art. And right, I actually have kept it pretty much a secret for, not on purpose, it's just that my outlet was always painting and I didn't care if anybody thought it was good or not. I just would do it whether I was injured or sometimes I, I took a long break of not skating, whether it was just like, cause I was on pills from treatment or just on a drinking bender, which I've seen me do for a long time. But uh, <laughs> you know, I had to have some kind of outlet. It was usually skateboarding or, you know, filming something funny like, uh, or a jackass type stunt. But um, whenever I wasn't doing that, I was always doing art. And um, I never really planned on having an art show until a lot of time went by. I have a place called The Hobbit Hole, which is down there. It's like an old barn, and um, I didn't go in it for six years, and I forgot what was in there. And then when I went in, I saw so many paintings that I've had since I started, which was basically 20 years ago, that are all just in there. And um, and I just decided to, you know, I'm going to have my first art show in Charleston, South Carolina on um, August 24th and 25th and just see how it goes. It's going to be a one time and one time only thing. But I mean, the, the artists that I look up to are people like Christopher Shy, who uses watercolor and egg yolk. And um, Andrew Wyeth, who is actually um, one of the most famous painters. Um, and he lives in Chester County. He's God rest his soul. But um, <laughs> and John Hannafin, he's, he paints with oil. And um, another favorite artist of mine is Kat Von D. And... Uh, and Drew Miller from Albany, New York, okay. which which is you know very fine detailed pencil portraits of usually faces. But my artwork is all over the place. Sometimes I Jackson Pollock shit like that. Sometimes I'll do cartoon work of like just weird looking monsters or just faces, or like that kitty cat there that looks kind of like my rip and dip slipper. <laughs> but um, when I was in treatment for two and a half years, which was the Guinness Book of Longest Florida Shuffle. If you don't know what that means, it means if the insurance, if the interventionist knows you have good insurance, they'll find reasons to keep you there for eternity. Because if you get Marchman acted or Baker acted, AKA 5150 in Florida, that means you have to do 90 days. So I would make it 88 days being like, I have two days left. They come in and find any reason to keep me there. You've been rocking those same jeans for like four days. That's bad hygiene. You're doing another 90 days. So I did two and a half years and I got so bored that I invented my own alphabet called Strigoi, which if you can see, the A is a heartogram, the B is the four C symbol, a C is just like two C's with a line and upside down cross, a D looks like two D's, looks like a boner kind of, an E is a tree, F is backwards with two lines, and I just wired it and mastered it quicker than, I could read it and, and write it faster than English. So all these paintings, have little notes, usually song lyrics or just however I'm feeling or just, you know, logging footage with, with co numbers of codes, but it's all written in Strigoi. I call it Strigoi, which means <laughs> Laskian means husky, <laughs> like fat in Finnish. Strigoi okay. means vampire, so fat vampire. Laskian Strigoi is what I call my alphabet. Fat vampire. Yeah, Laskian okay. Strigoi. Okay, okay. So it's, it's all over these paintings and, um, most of the paintings on the back have the alphabet decoded, so A would be the heart ramp, so you can see the whole thing. That's so whenever cool. you have, find the time that you want to know what the painting you bought says, then you eventually will figure it out. It's really huh. quick to learn if you just take the time to do it. So they each have kind of like an Easter egg in them. Oh, completely. That's yeah. dope. That's yeah. dope. So where did like art start for you? Like I know a lot of skaters have like their sketchbook, right? Where they do like their graffiti, yeah. their like their little black books where they're pencil and graffiti and stuff and like they go out on tag. Did it start in like that kind of realm for you or did it really start on a canvas like these? 
Um, I, I like doing it on canvas because if it's in, in any kind of notebook, it usually gets stolen or I'll leave it places. And I have left so many, much art in just different places by, by just being careless. So okay. if it's on a big piece of canvas, chances are I'm going to make sure I remember it to bring it back home wherever I have done it. I mean, all these paintings, you can look at each one. That one says Romania. That one says Calgary, Canada. That one says Sevilla, Spain. That one says Bucharest, Romania. That one says, well, that one's from Westchester. Um, and uh, mostly I, I, when I go on my painting of benders, I went on one in Bali, one in Romania, Spain for a long time because I lived there for like a year. I lived in Lithuania for a year and Helsinki. As, so these paintings for, are from all over the world and you know, all the way even back from 2003, there's a lot from 2007 and 2013 and 2017, and then a lot of new recent ones. But, you know, Pam, what do you like to paint with? Any fucking thing I could find. I've learned the hard way that if you paint with oil, it takes four days to dry, and I left a paint trail of footprints in my fancy hotel that led to my room, which cost me an $8,000 damage bill. So I don't like to use with oil anymore, but it's really fun to use oil and liquid. But anyway, mostly it's just uh, acrylic or acrylic paint markers. Okay. Or, um, I mean, I've used watercolor and egg, lo egg yolk like Christopher Shy. Um, but man, I've used anything from sweat, blood, and cum, <laughs> and piss. <laughs> Why? And because I shellac everything. I, I whatever I know that I'm done, I put a big coat of polyurethane on it just to seal the deal, so I don't fuck with it anymore. Okay. I've I've damaged so many good paintings by being like, man, that's pretty cool. It might be finished, but let me just try to put some blue in here. Oh, blue fucked up the whole thing. I should have polyurethane it and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> so there's so many paintings that had so much potential to be framed and sold and shellac, but I go and fuck it up because I never know when I'm finished. Yeah. That must has, that has to be like the hardest part is like you're, you're creating something from just blank, right? Yeah. Everything's up here. Like that's how I could never be an artist in this way. Like, Everything I see up here, I could never translate this way. Like, this is a true talent. You have not only a physical talent of the skate, but, like, to create almost your own language, right? Yeah. And and then, like, put in... I've, I've talked to a few artists, right? And, like, never have they had hidden Easter eggs for yeah. the people to find or, like... I don't, what is the thing with the egg yolk? Like, what does that do? The egg yolk makes it um, really shiny and crackly. Okay. It's cool looking. Okay. And, um, you know... Um, I I usually, you know, I'll do a whole, like, cartoon series, and then I did a whole, and when I was in Texas, I did 13 at once, and it's all yarn glued into a hardogram. So that's going to be in Charleston, South Carolina as well. It's actually getting shipped from Texas as we speak. But um, usually, all these paintings are just a massive outlet. There's a lot of Jackson Pollock just slinging shit around, but... When I usually go on my little art bender, it's it's six paintings at once. I'll slap paint all over it, and then I like to wash it off just to see like where it goes. And then from there, I see if I see any kind of shape. It could be anything from a person's face to a duck to a bike to a skateboard to a or to a tree. Anything that it looks like to me, and I'll look at it every which way until I figure out that it looks like something and then I'll just work with it from there. I mean, hmm. like, like for instance, uh, this, this was a mess in the beginning and it was just, you know, dangly shit until it turned into like a pig monster. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and these are all created in different parts of the world. Yeah, totally. And, and I mean, that one says Vilnius, Lithuania. That one says Bali. Um, well, there's a lot from Westchester, 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 where right. I live. Castle right. Bam. Right. <laughs> but that's pretty amazing. Do you take these on the plane with you? They never give you an issue? Like No, because, I mean, they're light, and I just chuck them in a bag. But as long as they're not big, then, I mean, I have left a shitload at places. And I usually just give it to the friend of whoever's house I'm staying at. Okay. Just because I don't feel like lugging it. But God damn, man. <laughs> You could double this for sure, and that's how many I've given away or just left 
behind by accident. So like your own little calling card. Yeah, but um, you know, it's it's pretty rad to see because I had no idea that these were still around. I did two and a half years of treatment. I lived in Iceland for a year, then Finland for a year, Lithuania. Then I went to Spain for two and a half years. And then I had to do two and a half years of fucking treatment in Florida. So when I got back, I didn't know if all this was gone, stolen, or I don't even remember it. So when I opened up the hospital after not being home for six years, I was like, holy shit, there's a fucking gold mine, (laughs) you know? And, that, um, that had to have felt amazing, too. Yeah. Now, do you paint in the Hobbit Hole? Um, I mean, I have before. I, I usually I usually paint out on the back deck there, sometimes in the kitchen where the sink is, or, you know, I mean... Yeah, it's beautiful here yeah. anywhere, right? Yeah, I mean... I, I, so my question was, I guess, like, do you have a spot that, like, you just... Like, that's your area. Like, it's your zen. I usually just leave the back door open to the kitchen, and I work out underneath the patio. And then when I need to come in and clean something or wash it off, I'll just go back and forth to the kitchen, play some music, and just work on six at once. Now, I've noticed when I do do six at once, there's always going to be two that work out great. And then the other three will usually be something that has potential that I'll figure out later, and then there's always one that just sucks a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just goes to show nothing's perfect, yeah, you yeah. know? It takes trying things over and over and over again to get what you want out of it, you know? And that's another thing with art. I mean, you can't judge art. I mean, some somebody could say that that painting sucks, but somebody else could say, I don't know why, I just like it. You know, I want to buy that. I want to stare at it in my house, you know, like... Well, that, that looks easy to me. I went to this fucking art show. No, it was an art gallery. And it was a painting this big. And it looks like it was blue in the back and a white white uh, paintbrush. It looks like somebody went like this or whatever. I was like, I can do that in a nanosecond. Yeah, but so-and-so or whatever did. I'm like, who's that? They're like, oh, it's a famous painter. So... I guess if you're a fan of that famous painter, you'll buy a painting that he did in a nanosecond just because it's his hand doing it. And I get it because I really like Iggy Pop or Billy Idol. I mean, if they spit on a blank white canvas, I'd probably buy it just to hang it up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just because it's their spit. Yes. Like, uh, I remember um, there's a charity event, and um, I think it was Cole Hamels from the Phillies. He was a pitcher for the Phillies. He showed up at the art show and he didn't feel like painting because he's not he doesn't like art he's never so he just threw a baseball at the canvas and ripped a hole in it and somebody bought it for a nice price so there you go that has to be like a luxury like yeah, right yeah. <laughs> so uh, how long did it take you to do that painting a fucking second boom <laughs> give me a check yeah. <laughs> well it's for charity so right right yeah. well even even so, it, it's amazing what you can do with an audience. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and it's not all, only an audience, it's a culture. Like, yeah. you, you've you created, like, not only a skate culture, but, like, I want to welcome to the world another side of BAM in the art side, you know? There are a lot of people just like you, and, and just like as I'm getting older, I can't ride the dirt bikes in the dirt as much. It beats my body up. Like, we can't go out and do it for 10 hours a day, our physical just zen place you know what i mean yeah. um where i adequate that to the skateboard to you right mm. like so like it's i feel like in society and culture now there's not a lot of people they either want to be perfectionists at one thing or they feel like failures right? right there's not a lot of people out there that understand it's okay to do a couple of things it's just whatever you find peace and happiness with in yourself right that's what you want to do yeah. you know and it doesn't matter what kind of person you are or where you are in life and that's kind of the way I felt like I I didn't want to be mediocre at everything. Like I didn't want to be the type of dude. That, oh, yeah, I'm pretty good at bowling. I'm pretty good at volleyball. I'm pretty good at lacrosse. I'm pretty good at basketball. I'm pretty good at skateboarding. No, I wanted to be fucking awesome at skateboarding and be the best at it. Uh, you know, like who wants to be mediocre good at everything? I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to pick skateboarding. And then from there, you know, I. I I already knew as soon as I saw a skateboard at the age of six, I knew exactly that's exactly what I wanted to do. I was a really good pitcher for a little league team. That's what my dad wanted me to do. But 
I did not like wearing the fucking uniform. I thought it was gay. I didn't <laughs> like everybody else wearing the same thing as me. I didn't like those stupid stirrups with the gay ass cleats that you don't even need. You know, like I, I liked as a skateboarder, you know, like you could wear anything you want and you could show up to the contest and if you don't do well, it's your own damn fault. Wouldn't it feel terrible to be the goalie of a hockey team? Your only mission is to stop the fucking puck from going, getting past the goal. And because of you, your only job is to make sure it doesn't get past. You made the other team get a goal and you lost the game for us. I would be like, shit, I'm so sorry, guys. I don't need that kind of pressure. Right, right, <laughs> right. It, it's And it's wild. And uh, how long... You knew at six, right? When did you start skating? I started at six. So how long, like, a lot of people have that, like, moment where they knew, like, this is it. Like, I've made it. All the rest is up from here. What What was that moment for you? Um, the Well, I guess it was gradual because when I was waiting at the school bus in the mo- st- stop in the morning time at my house in Westchester that I grew up in, This dude, his name was Brian Chamberlain, which I found out later, and he rode for a local team called Team Shebang Posse. But he was hauling ass down the street, and he just ollied this manhole cover and just kept hauling ass. He had this fucking thrasher hip kid hanging out with a scarf, a dangling scarf with sparkly grip tape. And I was like, that looked awesome. (laughs) So from there, I begged my parents to get me a skateboard. They got me one, and then... um. For the first time, I saw a skate contest in Burbank that was on TV that Tony Hawk happened to win, which I've been a mega fan of Tony Hawk from there on, and then Danny Way, and then Tom Penny, and, um, you know, but, but it was so gradual because I noticed that I was the best in the neighborhood, and then from there, I was the best in the town of Westchester, and then I'd win that contest and win this contest, so I knew I was pretty good. And then when I got sponsored by Fairman's, the local skate shop, that's when I got went to Woodward at the age of 14, got sponsored by Toy Machine, and then I was the first skater to ever ride for Nike at the age of 16, thanks to Remy Stratton from Volcom, who also put me on Volcom. Then in 2000, I got sponsored by Element, and, uh, and then from there, that's when Jackass became huge, like a light switch overnight, and became a massive success. So, um, so it was just... Right. I was. It was always just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It was never like one day I'm like, whoa, I made it. Right. I guess if I had to pick a time, it would be 2000 when the CKY videos were blowing up. I just got sponsored by Element. I'm on Nike. I'm on Volcom. I'm on Spitfire, uh, Destructo Trucks, which, um, you know, and every Clive Backpacks, any sponsor you can think of, I was on. Right Guard. They gave me a million dollars for one day at work to say, get extreme, get Right Guard. That's crazy. Yeah, and as what else is crazy, there would be a lot of, you know, skaters that think that that would be selling out. Like, you gotta keep it real, dog. Keep it real, my fucking ass. They gave me a million dollars for one day at work, and they just <laughs> asked me to do it again because the first one was successful, and I said yes to the second one. So suck my two-inch hose. If you ever got the opportunity to get a million dollars and say, get extreme, get right guard, and you declined it, you're a fucking moron. Well, I, I think that's a lot of thing, uh, the same thing a lot of people experience. When you're having, no matter what level of success, right? To a million dollars, is that's crazy to some people, right? Yeah. Like, they'll never see, know anybody that has a million dollars, right? Yeah. Um, and, and right guard goes hand in hand with skateboarding. You sweat your ass off. You smell like an anchovy's cunt when you get home. So, yeah, put on some goddamn deodorant. Right guard smells great. Well, so I, I think it's more like even when you see the internet trolls, like yeah. in your comment section, like nobody wants to truly see somebody succeed if they're not succeeding, right? right? right. Or if they're not benefiting from that succession, yeah. right? I doubt the people that were close to you that like you were buying whatever for that night dinner or whatever were sitting across the table like you sold yourself out, you know yeah. what I mean? It's a lot different. People it, it's a Trolls lot. are just people with no life and they have internet muscles because you can't attach the face to whatever they're typing. I mean, I've had everything from 
I'm holding Phoenix when he was three years old. I'm holding his butt up a slide, and it was an Instagram photo. Most people are like, oh, it's so great with you playing with your son at the park. One kid said, not only is this incest, it's pedophilia because he's three, they're related, and he's holding his ass. It's like, shut the fuck up. With trolls, you can't win. I could be feeding soup to the homeless, and they'd be like, oh, he probably burned his tongue on the hot soup, or the soup's probably old. Like, you cannot win. Just, I, I could be giving a $10 bill to a homeless and put it on Instagram, and they'd be like, oh, it's probably the last $10 you're going to spend on crack and overdose and die because of BAM. <laughs> you know, like... It's just wild. Yeah. They're just miserable. And, and we- they are behind the computer. As soon as I was doing a Comic-Con signing... This dude comes up to me, he's like, see that motherfucker 20 people down in the red Phillies cap? I'm like, yeah. They're like, that's John at so-and-so, the one that's been talking mega shit on you. I'm like, really? (laughs) Okay, good to know. So he finally comes up, and I'm just waiting to see what kind of balls he has. Like, yo, just so you know, I'm the motherfucker who's talking shit. Nope. They're pussies when they're in real life. Bam, I just want to say massive fan, and uh, I want to give you $100 for your autograph, and I just love everything you do. Shut up. (laughs) <laughs> they're such pussies in real life, but when they're behind the camera, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's crazy. I, I wish, and that's the whole reason I'm here, right? Yeah. Like, um, to talk about other things that people can do to kind of create a happier life for everybody. Then you don't have as much people. I, I mean, I witnessed it in the motorcycle community. I rode with a lot of people, right? And they're always nice to your face, right? Yeah. But, like, you get home and you post videos or, like, they send you weird-ass DMs. Yeah. Like, I'd fuck you up. And then you see them out on the road, yeah. right? And yeah. you're like, well, I'm here. Yeah. What do you... What, is it you're going to wait till you're home again? I you mean, know what I mean? Obviously, you're miserable if you have the time... To spend all day, every day, commenting and the controversy about... There's the controversy of Danny doesn't eat meat, but she had to use the bathroom of Burger King on the road at a service plaza on our way down to Florida. So I filmed her coming out because there was a funny ad that says, give us your million dollar idea and you can get a free Whopper. I'm like... Are you kidding me? Why would I give you my free million dollar idea so you could clock bank on it and I get a lousy free ass whopper? So because she came out and I'm laughing about the ad, I put it on Instagram. There are people talking, I thought she didn't eat meat. Well, dude, you can't get an impossible whopper. Dude, maybe she just had to piss. Maybe she wanted fries. Maybe if you're going to spend all day figuring out if she had a goddamn hamburger with cheese at Burger King, then you can talk all day long about it. Like you have nothing better to do. Well, there's people like you and I, right, that go out into the world and experience life. And then there's a lot of people that literally stay in their house and don't. I don't need to watch TV because I am my own walking television set. (laughs) Every day is something different. I mean, that's good. We just had Josie Moran over here. I've been friends with her for a long time, but she lives on M Night Shyamalan's property, and she has her argon face cream oil, and she, she, um. Oh, is always on QVC. So she has a house in St. Parts in Los Angeles and here. So uh, she came over to visit. But, like, she's going to have her billionaire party pretty soon. She sells so many products. Very proud of her. But, I mean, she's over here watching skateboarders. And she was having a great time because she's it's totally out of her realm. Mm-hmm. The other day I was at a hanging out with Billy Idol in Calgary, Canada. And then, you know, it doesn't matter. It, it could be a rock star an actor or I could be doing the weirdest shit like putting my purple Lamborghini on an airplane in North Korea because Kim Jong-il likes sports cars so there I am in Pyongyang couldn't drive it around but he <laughs> parked it at the airport and if people are like you've been to fucking North Korea yeah and, and no wonder the treatment centers declared me as schizophrenic because when you're in there balking like a chicken and you're trying to marry your own sneaker because you're all crazy and I'm sitting there talking about Kim Jong-il sending my purple <laughs> Lamborghini to Pyongyang and then Billy Idol caught off the fucking roof of it. They're like schizophrenic. <laughs> but if you look it up on the interweb, it's all fucking true. It's just so out of the realm of normal reality. You know what I mean? It, it takes really going out in the world and experiencing life to <laughs> really get that yeah. odd of a life you know and, and i can and see this guy probably you know the interventions probably didn't even know i'm on tv or jackass or anything so you know when you're fucking yelling at your own sneaker saying why didn't you marry me and i'm sitting there talking about billy idol cutting off the roof of a purple lamborghini it does sound crazy mm-hmm. if you don't do the research right i'm and just another ordinary nut in the mental institution so to wrap it up at that let's just say 
Thanks for hearing about all my art and how I get it done in my Lasky and Strigoi language, but we're having a very special art show on August 24th and 25th in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina at Parrot Surf and Skate Shop. So, if you're in the North Carolina area or Chattanooga or fucking Jacksonville, Florida or Georgia, take off work, get your answers up there. It's a very special event. One time and one time only. Yeah, I'm on. Stay cool, guys.